guys welcome back to cam's custom backgrounds now again i have an empty bench for the you for those of you that follow me on facebook you'll know that uh i've recently posted some photos of a enclosure of mine that i'm finally getting time to do and that enclosure is this monster right here now i thought the last one i had in here took up a bit of space and in my little workspace that I have, that's on one side, and that's on the other side. And to pan out to show you what I'm actually working with, that's my space. Now, this is a 1200 wide, 1200 high. Um, from front to back there is seven, I believe, 700. And each side here is uh, 280. Where this sits is directly on top of a um, another uh, timber frame that I built that houses a 900 um, Repti Zoo glass enclosure. Um, that currently has my diamond python in it. And this big enclosure here behind me is my diamonds uh, forever home. So I've got to get this thing finished because um, she's growing like an absolute weed. Hey guys, for you... This hasn't been very long, but for me, it's been about a week or two. Um, I had issues with my phone. Uh, it wouldn't let me film anything. It's been in getting repaired. So rather than waiting and waiting and waiting for this thing to do anything, I had to just get moving on it because I needed to get it done. So unfortunately, I haven't filmed any of what you can see behind me. Um, but I will run you through exactly what I've done and I'm at the stage now where I'm ready to start carving this. All right, guys, here we have underneath this whole section here is a, um, uh, MDF shelf and it's all been screwed in through the sides here. Now on this one in particular, I'm not too fussed about having screws coming through the back because I'm actually going to be lining the entire outside of this with fake hedge. Um, but down the bottom here, I've got some more ledges and things like that down there that have been done out of insulation foam. And then the rest, I've filled in underneath the shelf here with some foam panels to try and create, create a bit more shape. So it didn't just look like a shelf just sticking out of a rock wall. Uh, and then everything else is normal. I've got some big giant blobs of um, uh, expanding foam here, which I've done in layers. You can sort of see there that's one layer and then on top. I've done that to try and eliminate any air pockets that form behind it. Um, but I want to try and go for this nice smooth round boulder around the bottom and then start to transition up to the top. Now this panel that's in here, I've put that in to try and block what will be from up here will be the heat lamp and cage and from the front i didn't want to be able to see that and it also gives her somewhere nice and secure out there that she can get up and get out of out of the view of everybody um that's it guys it's pretty much ready to go i've got a lot of carving ahead of me and um i'm going to be coating the entire way to the front here with pointing um that way the whole inside is one big rock wall. Just got to try these out now. Um, Luke from Beachy Scaly Beast, he's used these in the past for different methods and things like that. And I uh, thought I'd better finally give him a crack. And I've just gone and got a uh, another extension bit, one that holds the um, 
the sort of attachment like this. Don't even know what they what they're called. Should know. They're a chippy, but don't know. Uh, I'm just going to call them a quick release. That's probably the best. Um, so yeah, got myself one of them to try and get a bit longer away from the drill. Um, but yeah, we'll see how they go. Just to interrupt the time lapse here, the wire brush does a great job, um, except it is extremely messy. Now you can see here this real fine sort of powdery foam. You don't want that stuff everywhere. Um, it's good for doing sections like this that are a bit flatter bit harder to get into with your knife and things like that but um yeah it's not something that i'll do the entire enclosure with but definitely another tool to add to my arsenal so um yeah i'll get back into it bit of an idea to um, eliminate having that cage and heat globe up there that I was going to say that I was going to do so I'm going to try and utilize this um, heat cord that I had laying around and actually make uh, make that shelf uh, a hot shelf um, so I'll set you up here and I'm going to cut out the top foam there and see if I can inlay this um, this heat cord in a way that um, I can get it to heat the actual shelf up. guys as you can see I have foamed in the sides uh, and I have actually released this and put, being able to pull this out um, but I did um, have a hole here so I filled it back in I've got to cut that back out but um, once I do install this properly I am just going to put a couple of blobs of silicon just across the front edge just to stop um, that movement up and down um last thing i want is my snake to be able to lift that rock and get underneath into where the heat cord is but um this cord has been sitting or has been on for about two hours so i'll just come out to check the temperature and see what's going on and i'm getting a reading of about 23 in certain spots there's 23 there and if i do the same reading over this side we are at 14. so i am getting a temperature fairly 
substantial temperature change, but I'm not overly happy with the warmth of it. To me, it's not warm enough. So that means back to the drawing board and potentially try and lift the lift the cord a bit higher. Uh, excuse that moth. Uh, yeah, lift the cord a bit higher and get it closer to the underside of the fake rock here and hopefully that tries to get some heat up a bit higher. After a lot of testing and everything, I couldn't quite get this right. So this is my final attempt and it has worked awesome as you can see in this photo here. It reaches temps of about 70 degrees on the underside um, and 40 on the top. Now that's excessive for a diamond. Gives me a chance uh, to see what the temperature can get to and I can um, dial that down to what I actually want. But this is what I'm going to be doing on my main one. So I've routed in some grooves. That is a continuous continuous run, as you can see there. Um, I just put some foil tape on that to hold them in place. And I have also lined up these channels here. Uh, with these openings in the uh, foil and simply going to sit that down on top and that's how it's going to work. Now to get that into this setup, now I've got, uh, got that foam panel down there that is flush with the underside of my basking rock. Down in this hole down here, it has actually got some, um, uh, I've actually gone and cut a hole in the back of the enclosure. And I will probably take a bit more out of this, or this is where I'll be running the channels to line up to get some ventilation through the, um, through the cord. So I'll set you up and I'll show you how I um, start routering in and setting in this cord and I'll start tidying up all of this foam and all that sort of stuff. All right, what I've gone and done here is I laid this panel inside the recess in the enclosure and then I slid my top panel on top of it and I put these skewers through it while it was in place. And I also marked where my um, uh, where my out is for my cord. So what that's done is it's allowed me to separate these two and it gives me these tiny little holes here that I can relocate where this needs to be so I can line up all my channels. And then on the other side, it also gives me my start point for where my cord goes. Now, what I've done also is marked the external of this panel while it was still together and then I rough laid out my uh, curve and made sure that all of the cord fits into where I'm where I'm wanting it to go and then I'll be using this bit on my Dremel and simply start carving some um, some trenches into this guys I am ready to start coating so I've carved everything got my uh, heat cord and everything set up I have my bucket of pointing and stuff here ready to go and first coat you're gonna water it down so it's um, it's a bit thinner a bit easier to use it will not cover everything don't be alarmed it's only a priming layer so we'll get stuck into it
guys, there we are at the end of third coat. I didn't film the second coat again because it's the same process. Um, but I did have a play around with the color, changed it to more of a brown and I didn't like that. So at the start of this, la that last time lapse, you would have seen that. Um, but then this time around as the final coat, using the same color, same mix as I was using before, I then added a heap of black to it. And I've gone through and done a lot of the shading and everything. Uh, I showed this in some of my other videos and that. I just find it makes it a lot easier um, to do it now and then just blend it in better with the black paint and stuff later. But um, you can see the textures and stuff there. Everything come up pretty nice and neat. Down inside here, I wasn't too fussed about how that looked because I'm going to have that rock that covers over it. But um, yeah, everything's come out pretty good. And uh, when it dries, we'll start throwing some colours at it. All right, here we are in this uh, rainy night. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but this is all dry and ready for me to start painting. I've got my rock for the heat pad, or the heat rock sitting there. I haven't got the heat cord in it yet, I've just got the rock sitting there so that I can paint it all as one unit. But um, yeah, I'll show you what I've got going here. So this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm only going to be using the airbrush for all the highlights and things like that. So I'm actually going to take you through and uh, show you what I do with sort of the more, I suppose, a, a, what they would call a wash. Um, it's basically using very watered down, like you can see how runny that is, very watered down acrylic paints. Now, I just found as long as they're a water-based acrylic paint, doesn't matter where you get it from, they all do the same thing. So, just various size brushes. That's just a black one there. And uh, I've got two different types of greens. This one here, I generally don't like using it. It tends to just disappear or just go really dark, like way too dark. So um, yeah, I'll set this up and we'll get cracking with some paint. All right, guys, got my jar here, got my brush. And this will look like it goes on a lot. Um, but once it dries, it generally, the, the water sort of dissipates a fair bit and it's, um, the, the colors a lot more opaque, uh, transparent. So it doesn't really stand out as much as you would probably think. Um, usually when I go through with the airbrush, uh, it looks sick when I first do it and then after it all dries, it pretty much disappears. So... I've quite often gone back over and done this with the brush anyway, but this time around I'm just going to start with this um, and see how we go. And you pretty much just want to spread it out.
guys, it's the next morning and the green is still way too green. I don't like the look of it, so I'm gonna to take to it with my airbrush and see if I can fix it up a bit. to um, silicon that down. Silicon's something easy that you can cut later. But um, yeah, I'll get that all stuck down and get it operating and get the thermostat put in the back. All right, well, there it is. It's all finished. Um, I went ahead and painted this log up just to make it look a bit more natural. So yeah, I still got a bit of a way to go on this one as uh, I'm waiting on a few big plants and stuff for the bottom. Um, I'm waiting on some mesh for the top, got to mount my light, got to do the, um, the hedge on the outside, but, um, I'll make that a separate video and I'll put that in with, um, when I put my diamond into the enclosure. Um, that way you can see it all set up in place and I'll run you through the next build that I need to do it at my place. Um, but yeah, as for, as for this one. I'm glad I came back in and did it again and I didn't just go with it because it's turned out heaps better. Um, I'll show you a few close-ups and stuff down the bottom here. They look heaps better, heaps better, not so bright. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to follow me on Facebook, it's Cam's Custom Backgrounds. And um, yeah, hit that subscribe button and I'm almost at 500, which is awesome. Um... And then, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll um, catch you on the next build.